Hello and thanks for joining us. This is the signature 30 minutes. I am Marvelous Oboman. Now in the headlines, residents in fear over frequent kidnap in Tungamaje, Abuja. Abuja residents reacts to the Federal Capital Development Authority Park and Pay Policy. Power outage in Southeast blamed on heavy downpours. And now, the details. Fresh fear has gripped residents of the Tungamaje, a suburb of Abuja, the Nigerian capital, over another incident of kidnapping in the community. The community was attacked on Monday night and four persons were kidnapped, one police officer killed and a member of the community vigilante seriously injured as they attempt to repel the attack. The Coalition for Human Rights and Social Justice in Nigeria has called on the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Attorney General and well-meaning Nigerians to seek justice for Mrs. B.C. Bolade, an 88-year-old senior citizen whose life is currently under threat by a group of people who have resolved to forcefully take over her landed property and make her life a sorrowful one. The convener of the group, Enya Peter, made a request at a press conference in Abuja on Thursday. According to the convener, Mrs. Bolade's life is under a serious threat by those who went to take over her landed property which she legally owns in Ikeja, the Lagos state capital. The land in question was acquired in December of 1977 and documentations were completed in March. 1978. The copy of the land survey was done in 1975, was also given to her with a receipt of purchase. First trespass or into the land was by a family known as by the Kuisi Awashi's family. This happened in 1991. Ms. Bisi went, Madam Bisi went to court in Lagos and won the case in 1992. After she had registered and conveyed with the register of deeds at the Lagos Register Registry in Lagos, signed 12 March 1992, she secured the land. She rented it out to some mechanics to use as a workshop. In 2004, some members of the above-named family approached her Madam B.C., to ask her to give them the land in attempt that they would give her another land. On account of Madam B.C.'s age, we wish to call on all those concerned, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, the Attorney General, and the international community to push for an accelerated hearing on the matter in the Supreme Court, where there is a motion has been filed in the nefarious hope that she would not be alive to see the same conclusion. The matter as it is, is no, longer personal, is no longer a personal issue, as it borders around the inherent inherence to the rule of law and the courts of the public opinion and a call to sanitize the judiciary system. Experts in the media, security and civil society Thursday came together in a webinar to discuss ways to balance freedom of expression and national security. The online event with the team Mass Media and the intersection of national security and the civic space in Nigeria explored ways the media can effectively function without compromising the security of the nation. Speaking at the event, General Dambazo, former Minister of Interior, described the media as gatekeepers who have the ability to facilitate social growth and development. He encouraged journalists to approach issues from the national perspective while stating the need for a boost in freedom of expression. The meeting was moderated by former lawmaker Honorable Nenna Elendo Ukeje and was convened by the Open Society Initiative for West Africa and White Inc. Institute for Strategic Education and Research, Nigeria. The National Drug and Law Enforcement Agency and the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons have paid a courtesy visit to the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tahiru Ibrahim, to seek continuous partnership. The two government agencies in their separate calls stress the need for a synergy between their agencies and the Nigerian Army. 
the stated that substance abuse and human trafficking contributed to the current security threats in Nigeria, making almost every part of the country unsafe. Signature TV correspondent was at the cuts visit and now reports. The chairman of the Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLUEA, Buba Marowa, while congratulating the Chief of Army staff on his appointment, said that no part of the country is safe, as many Nigerians are guilty of drug abuse, adding that Nigeria's security challenges can be traced to substance abuse. The NDLUEA boss, who said that the agency is winning the war against drug abuse, called on the Nigerian army to help the agency deliver its objectives through providing training and rehabilitation centers. In the last uh, couple of weeks, we have all uh, been privy to what the NDLA has done and is doing in the matter of seizures and arrests and law enforcement and convictions. But we need more firepower uh, on occasion, and we'd like to seek the support of um, the Nigerian Army. The Director General, National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Iman Suleiman, said that human trafficking portends a great danger to Nigeria's image. She stated that the agency at present is in 21 states and has nine commands to tackle the rising cases of human trafficking. She called on the Nigerian army to help train their operatives and also collaborate with the agency in joint operations, especially in the border areas. Strongly require the support of the Nigerian army is in the areas of joint operations. When they need arise, especially around our borders, especially in the northeast of the country. We have a lot of people that are unaccounted for. So it's very easy for people to be trafficked in a large number without knowing. As an agency with great potentials, we also have administrative and um, operational challenges. Things like vehicle, computers. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Tahiro, who received the visitors at the Army Headquarters, assured them that the Nigerian Army will support their efforts in delivering their objectives and advised them to sustain the tempo in the achievement of their agency's mandate. Your effort in curbing illicit flow of drugs has equally impacted possibly in reducing the security in Nigeria. This is because findings have shown that proceeds from illicit flow of drugs are used to fund some of the security challenges we face in the country. Therefore, I would urge you to do more so that Nigeria can become a secured and drug abuse free country. Let me state that the Nigerian Army under my watch has zero tolerance for drug and substance abuse. I would therefore appreciate if the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency can include other communities in their sensitization programs, workshops, and seminars. This will help reduce and educate our children the products populates and the dangers of drug abuse. Mr. Chairman, so let me conclude by assuring you that the Nigerian Army will continue to support you and collaborate with the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency in your programs and activities. Most trafficked persons are carried across our borders and sometimes used as food soldiers for terrorists, bandits and other criminal elements. This has in recent times contributed to the challenges of insecurity in the country. The Nigerian Army will continue to support and collaborate with the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons. The visit by the two government agencies indicates a readiness by federal government agencies to collaborate in area of security. I am Marvelous Obomano. For Signature TV, Abuja. In a bid to reposition the armed forces of Nigeria for better service delivery, the Commandant Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji, Air Vice Marshal E.O. Alade, paid a custody visit to the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiro, in Abuja on Wednesday. 
according to the commandant, the courtesy visit to the Nigerian Army headquarters was to brief the Army chief on some of the challenges the school was facing, prefer solutions and work out ways to partner with the Nigerian Army. The commandant said that the command school has a standard to maintain and therefore concerted efforts should be made to keep the standard. Signature TV correspondent was at the Army headquarters and now reports. The Commandant Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji, Air Vice Marshal E.A. Alade stated that the school needs more accommodation and directing staff officers to cater for the increasing number of students sent in by the three services. He called on the Army Chief to allow the school to use the airborne quarters to help reduce the issue of accommodation. The Nigerian Army has requested for more slots for the junior course students. Likewise, the Air Force, and even Navy, Navy. But what we can cope with currently is a far cry from your requirements. So that's why we have appealed to you, sir, for the use of the airborne cutters, if they are available, just to augment why we are appealing to the service chiefs to still build more accommodation for the students. And of course, we appeal for more directing staff to be posted into the college so that we can meet our requirements in ensuring we, we maintain the standard in the college. The chief of army staff who received the commandant and his entourage at the army headquarters assured the commandant that the Nigerian army will look into the requests and challenges the school was facing. The issue raised in terms of the use of the urban quarters is being given adequate attention. I've asked the uh, principal staff officer in charge of that to look at the possibility of using that. In principle, I can say we're in agreement, but we'll wait and do all the needful so that we can get back to you. The Department of Land Warfare, anytime I'm in Jaji, uh, going to visit and if they have any requirement for repairs and improvement in terms of refurbishment, we we'll also address that. Uh, I want to also thank you for the level of uh, training that is going on in the entire college in terms of operational level manpower and the standardization of staff duties. The Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji, is a training facility for senior officers of the Nigerian Armed Forces. I am Marvelous Obomman for Signature TV, Abuja. The Federal Capital Territory Administration has announced plans to reintroduce the on-street parking scheme, popularly known as the Park and Pay Policy, with effect from 1 May 2021. Acting Secretary of the Transportation Secretariat, Yaya Usman said this while addressing newsmen in Abuja on Tuesday. Signature TV correspondent Blessing Adejo went to the streets of Abuja to find out the reaction of residents to the policy. Uh, yeah, you know, this issue of pack and pay is because uh, th th there's going to be money coming into the coffers of th these people. Uh, what are they doing for a common man with that money? You won't get. There are a lot of laws that are affecting themselves. They are marching them down. But these laws, the, the ones they feel are, are infringing on the rights of a poor man, they will allow them to fly. And so I'm not surprised if they implement the, the law, despite the hardship going about. All they need is that a, a poor man who has a taxi and is hustling to feed himself happens to just park and then he's asked to pay. I believe it's going to help. The reason why it's going to help, to park a vehicle wrongly is against the law of the land. Meanwhile, if anyone, not as in people that are not obeying to park that vehicle properly, Park wrong and pay is right. Because I believe in Kano some years ago, we, have, we had just experience whereby if you park your car wrongly, you pay some certain amount which is going to help the community, the state or the country. A lot of things have been against commuters in this country. FCT. If they are driving 
and they are trying to uh, receive call, road safety is on their neck. If they so clear them park somewhere and answer that call, some other uh, security people are also on them. So, I mean, you don't really understand what all of these things seek to achieve. You know, basically just putting the people on much pressure, putting them on into an apprehensive situation. They don't even know which one to choose. I think it's something that ought to already be in practice. It never should have been stopped because this... Um Unlawful parkings of cars on the road, causing traffic and all of that is not good enough. You understand? So I, 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 would, I would support it. Although I know the economy is not favorable for every Nigerian right now, but at the same time, this is not the right thing to do. In civilized countries, you park your car like this, they tow it or you pay a fine. It's not the right time to do that. The park and pay have come to Abuja before, which is a very, very big inconvenience for many people on the road. Because the kind of Abuja structure, there is no big car park for people. The way people make their business, offices, even bank, there is no parking space, if not the edges of the road. There is mark on the road. They want to use that mark to make money for themselves. But when individuals will feel inconvenience about that, which is not good, it's not even good, it's not a good idea for now. The Minister of Power, Saleh Maman, says the federal government is working to restore the power supply in the country. He stated this via Twitter on Thursday while explaining that the reason for the power outage being experienced in some parts of the country. According to him, the power outage was caused by the breakdown of some national integrated power plants supplying electricity to the national grid in Sapele, Afam, Olorunsogo, Omotosho, Ebom, Ebwin, Aloji and Ehovbo why Jeba was shut down for annual maintenance. He, however, assured that everyone involved in working assiduously to restore the national grid to its previous historical levels and exceed that. Heavy storms which occurred over the weekend in the southeastern states has destroyed electrical installations in the region. In a statement made available to journalists in Enugu on Thursday by the head, Corporate Communications Enugu Electricity Distribution Company, EEDC, and Mecca Eze. He said the situation had led to a loss of several high tension and low tension poles, aluminum conductors, as well as other line accessories. According to him, it is also resulted in power outage affecting some of its 33 kV and 11 kV feeders within the network of Anambra and Imo parts of Abia and Enugu State. He said that the recent development had led to power outages while promising that it will be restored soon. The Kano state government says 10 persons have died due to the consumption of substandard juice currently in circulation in the state. In a social media post made by the state commissioner for health, Dr. Aminu Sanyawa, he also confirmed that about 400 others are currently on admissions at the various hospitals why 50 others are undergoing kidney-related treatments. The commissioner cautioned residents of the state against the consumption of killer juice, which has an effect on the kidney and other vital organs of the body. Kanu had over the past couple of weeks been battling with an outbreak of a strange disease that has further stretched the health challenges of the state. The Thursday update by the commissioner for health came on the heels of a major breakthrough by the National Agency for Food, Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC's arrest of the suspects behind the Kano killer drinks. Unknown gunmen have again killed three policemen on stop and search duty along Onu Ebonye, Nwezenyi Road, Abakaliki Ebonye State. The incident occurred on Wednesday night when the gunmen opened fire on the officers, killing three of them on the spot and taking away their guns. The state's police public relations officer, DSP Oda Lovett of Bianuju, when contacted, said the incident could be true but has not been officially confirmed. According to her, the deputy commissioner of police operation was at the scene to ascertain the level of damage. Rampant kidnapping along the Gusal Dansadu Road Zanfara has left the highway vacant of commercial driver owing to the ongoing four-day strike. 
Isuhu Ticha, chairman of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, has drawn the attention of the police, saying that three drivers have been killed and four kidnapped, having been with their doctors for 40 days, while stating that kidnapping on the road has become a daily occurrence, while recounting of a driver conveying a bride and wedding guest, who was shot dead with the bride and guest kidnapped. A resident of Dansadu, while speaking at, to the press, said that some drivers no longer carry passengers to Dansabo, but rather stop at Yatasha Sahabi community, which is 25 kilometers away from Dansabo, where they would then take commercial motorbikes to reach Dansadu. The state police command, reacting through its spokesman, SP Mohamed Shehu, said the command is up and doing to secure the road and also called on the community residents to assist security operatives with vital information on the movement of criminals, adding that there are so many checkpoints along the road. Some suspected thief militia were said to have launched an attack during the early hours of Thursday, killing three people in Wukari local government area of Taraba State. The armed attackers came to Rafinkada town located along Wukari Tankum Road at about 2 a.m. on Thursday on several motorbikes, shooting in all directions and killed two women and an elderly person while wounding some and scaring away many as women and children were forced to flee. The chairman of Wukari Local Government Council, Adi Daniel, confirmed the incident while stating that there was confusion due to the heavy shooting coming from all directions in the town, while stating that the town was not far away from Benue Bandre and the town suffered more than 20 attacks from thief militia during Jukun thief crisis. The spokesperson of the Taraba Police Command, DSP David Misa, also confirmed the attack. And now on sports, the Super Eagles captain Ahmed Musa recently joined Kanu Pillars of the Nigerian Premier League football. The Super Eagles captain is back at the Sani Abacha Stadium for the remainder of the season after leaving the Saudi Arabia Pro League. Signature TV correspondent Blessing Adagio sampled the opinion of some footballers on the development. going to help the sports in um, that's our local league because he's an experienced footballer he has played internationally so he has that presence that would also bring more focus on our league sports I think it's a good one Sha. and maybe you go feel make the others people comfortable to make up to like the way where he make up you know everybody has his own reason they instead of him to go to Chelsea or any other club you know everybody has his own feeling maybe it's his own family that make him to do like that. He's a loyal servant. You know, he's an indigenous from Kano, and when he started his football life, all the way from Kano, Kano Pillars, and so the guy cannot leave Kano Pillars because this way the one that brought him up before he gets to abroad. Before we end the news, a recap of our major stories. Residents in fear over frequent kidnap in Tunga Maje, Abuja. Abuja residents react to the Federal Capital Development Authority Park and Pay Policy. Power outage in Southeast blamed on heavy downpours. Please do well to stay safe, maintain physical and social distance, and wear your nose marks while going about your daily activities. And that's the signature 30 minutes. On behalf of my producer, Anita Eze, I am Marvelous Obomanu. Thanks for watching.